Good morning. Welcome to Madeira's first webinar on specialty thread. This morning we're going to be talking about 60 weight. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm the Marketing and Communications Director for Madeira USA. My name is Alice Wolf, and I'll be moderating this webinar. I'd like to share our goals just quickly with you uh, for this morning. We have three. First, we want to make sure that you gain the knowledge of when and how 60 weight thread will work for you. Second, we'd like to be sure that you've achieved a comfort level so that you can see it as an option for solving some challenges in your business. Finally, we're hoping that you'll end up with the confidence to want to try it. And what can you expect from us in this 45 minutes to an hour? How do we plan to achieve these goals? We're going to be going over some instruction, sharing the attributes of 60 weight. We'll show you examples of stitch outs and we'll talk about them. We'll give you some tips and tricks from a couple of experts. And finally, we'll end up with a free design that you're able to download and try out for yourself. In order to make sure that you're comfortable and confident with 60 weight, we've asked two embroidery specialists to join us this morning. Also, we ask that you type in your questions as we go along. We'll answer them throughout, so don't wait till the end of the webinar. We'd like to try to liven it up by having your questions answered throughout this time. And if we don't answer your question verbally, we'll follow it up with an email afterwards. So don't be afraid to send in those questions. We'd like to make sure that you are real comfortable with 60 weight by the end of this webinar. First of all, I'd like to introduce our two specialists. Pat Williams is a master digitizer with 19 years of commercial digitizing experience and an advocate of 60 weight thread. Pat currently sells stock designs on embroiderydesigns.com and embroiderydesignsplus.com. She is the author of Digitizing Steps to Success, a set of training CDs that are designed to teach you the digitizing techniques needed to make beautiful designs in any embroidery digitizing software. Rich Medcraft began as a sales rep for a wholesale garment headwear distributor calling on embroiderers and screen printers all over the Northwest. After watching an embroidery machine sew out a design, Rich was hooked. Thirteen years ago, he started his own embroidery design company, Stitchwise Embroidery Design, based in Oregon. His company specializes in high-quality custom digitizing and training for commercial embroiderers, as well as providing complete corporate and retail embroidery service. Both Pat and Rich are part of our National Association of Madeira Embroidery Specialists, or NAMES. They act as advisors to Madeira, testing new products, suggesting new products, and helping us to serve our customers better. Okay, let's get started. Let's begin with some of the attributes of 60 weight thread. Think of 60 weight thread for adding dimension, highlights, and shadows to your work. Pat, Rich, do you have any comments on these two designs? Well, I'd like to address a, a question that over here that's um, already been answered. But it, the question was, uh, do you know anyone that uses 60 weight thread all the time? I don't know the name of the company, but I know that in Florida there's a golf shirt company that uses nothing but 60 weight thread. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, most often you're going to use 60 weight thread to do things like on your screen where you're going to accent this flower with some 60 weight thread, maybe this little tiny hummingbird over here. Uh, so in most companies, you're going to use 60 weight thread sometimes when, it, when it's called for in a design. But there are companies that do use 60 weight thread all the time for everything. Yes, and, and okay. Following up on that, uh, golf shops are notorious for having uh, really small logos that they put on their shirts because most golf shops that uh, I've worked with, they, they do not like very large designs at all on their shirts. Well, as you all have run across, I'm sure, from time to time, it seems like more and more we see logos that require smaller and smaller lettering and detail. And um, the only way to really adequately, in my mind, create this is by using this wonderful thread. A 60 weight thread, I, I think you might uh, view uh, maybe in a, in a comparison. It's almost like having an extra sharp pencil uh, when you're trying to draw something. 
Um, if you're using a big fat a felt tip marker, for example, your line is really heavy. Uh, if you use a really uh, fine marker, you can draw a really sharp line. Well, the same thing is really true with 60 weight thread. And so it's wonderful when you're doing small detail, small lettering, or um, uh, uh, in, in a lot of cases, real small logos. So golf shirts are one aspect um, that are a good thing to use 60 weight thread on. Let's take a look at the next attribute. Here you're going to see some examples of what Pat and Rich have done. And this is examples of clarity and detail that can be added to your design. Don't Bug Me, which you see on this screen, is the free downloadable design that was designed specifically for Madeira by Pat in order to give you a, an opportunity to try uh, sewing out with 60-way thread. Yeah, even in that little B on the right-hand side, I think the little critters in this were about a half an inch tall. But he's even got shading around his eyeballs that was possible with 60-way thread. And as you can see, the whole design is two and a half inches by two and a half inches. When now, Rich, do you want to talk about that car? Where you use 60 weight on yeah. that? Yeah, I've, um, I've done an awful lot of cars, um, and most of the time uh, they're real small designs for left chest, or uh, in this case I did it even for a cap front. And uh, a lot of the detail, like you see in the wire wheels, um, in the grill slats, things like that, uh, the only way you can uh, really create them uh, is by using uh, this 60 weight thread because Again, the 60-way thread allows me to put more lines in a smaller area and still maintain the clarity. If I use regular 40-way thread, um, most of the wheel would just kind of have turned into a blob, and I would have had to reduce the number of uh, vertical lines in the grill slats because, again, the lines would have been a little bit too heavy, and if they get too close together, then it would just kind of close up the space. So the 60-way thread makes this design possible. You also used 60 weight for just the outlining on that car, didn't you, just to make a real fine outline? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good design. Uh, this rendezvous that's down good. in the... Go ahead. I was just going to say the stitch length on it, um, on the outline, uh, is not any different than you would do with regular 40 weight. Um, it's 1.8 millimeters, 1.5 to 1.8 millimeters in length. Pat, there's a question asking if 60 weight was used as the fill in the bugs as well. Yes, it was, just because they're so tiny and I didn't want them to get too thick. And in fact, everything in that design is 60 weight. Okay. Some of the questions that we can read that are coming in um, are asking things that I know will be answered throughout the webinar. So if we don't answer you right away, that's why. Um, we do have somebody also that's typing in questions, answers to your questions. So we just want to make sure that everybody is answered. Um, but we can go to the next slide. No. No? I want to talk about rendezvous. Okay. Go back then. Just, just because uh, a white thread is, is always very, very difficult on black garments. And this rendezvous nightclub that I made this design for is um, very thin lettering, but probably the columns are like 1.2 millimeters wide. You want to keep them that way. But I, had, I wanted this white thread to show up very, very cleanly on the, the everything they wore was black. Black vests, black hats, black um, shirts. And it was going on piquet as well, So, uh, at, which is always the hardest when you're putting white thread on a black piquet shirt. But this rendezvous um, came out very, very cleanly. This design is also all done in 60 weight thread. And I, and I did that because you put more density into the stitches, and we'll talk about more of that later. But uh, I could put more density in and get these nice clean lines to show up in white on black thread. Now, actually, um, because white is so difficult, I think I used a really light silver for this company. But I did want to mention how clean the lettering can be if you use 60 weight thread. The one design that we didn't speak of um, is the one on the left. That was done by Bonnie Nielsen, who is a designer digitizer that works for Madeira Germany. 
Um, it's fairly indicative of logos that you can do. Very, very small. You can see it's under two inches. It's a little bit over an inch and a half. Um, and there's a lot of detail in that that was achieved that she used all 60 weight on. Um, Rich, I think that one of the questions was similar to Don't Bug Me. Um, are we correct that the fill that you used in the car was 40 weight? So the car is actually a combination of 60 and 40. Question. Um, I, when I'm doing a big fill like this, um, I did use regular 40 weight. Um, one of the nice things about um, the Madura 60 weight thread, though, is the color. The colors are all color matched between 60 and 40 weight. So, if, for example, um, the yellow car, maybe there was some yellow detail that I was concerned about that was really small, I could have used the same um, uh, 60 weight color. Uh, providing was available, and there's, what, over 65 colors in the rayon and 100 colors in the poly neon. So um, it makes it nice to be able to go back and forth. But on a fill like this in the car, I use just regular 40 weight because there was really no uh, need to go with 60 weight. Uh, if I had, I could have, but I would have had to increase the density, and, and, uh, and, and it really wasn't necessary because, uh, again, what I'm doing here is just filling the area. Okay, Pat, um, I have a question on the, on the rendezvous. Did you use a topping in order to accomplish that? No. Um, because of some underlay techniques that I use, even on these small letters, I don't have to use uh, toppings anymore. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide. Ideally, 60 weight is a thread to turn to for small lettering. In fact, you can go as small as 3 millimeters high. Uh, the penny in the upper left-hand corner kind of puts these designs in perspective. The cupcake that you see here was actually uh, a design that Pat did for us. It was a giveaway that we used at the Long Beach ISS show in January. And it was done to show examples of many different threads, um, rayon, frosted mat, uh, there's a I think a 50 weight metallic in there, but the, the word Madeira, Pat used the 60 weight thread on in order to get that to stick out. Yeah, that, that little cupcake too, I think that was only maybe about two inches wide. And so to get, to get Madeira in there, that small inside of that area, um, I, you really had to go to 60 weight to do that lettering. And then next to the cupcake is a, a logo or emblem that I know has stopped traffic at some trade shows when they stop to see those tiny, tiny details that Pat was able to accomplish. Yeah, now in that design, um, that was for um, the Department of Defense, obviously. It's a presidential seal. And for the two blues in the background, the navy blue and the lighter blue, those are regular 40 weight thread. But I think everything on the eagle the stars, the arrows, the little green laurel leaves around the bottom, the lettering, uh, that's all 60 weight thread. And, and this logo has served me very, very well as far as uh, I, I live next door to Fort Huachuca, um, which is the intelligence center for the United States Army. And so we have just sewn this um, presidential seal hundreds and thousands of times. So it's a really good use of when to use 60 weight thread. Otherwise, you couldn't get all the clarity in that design. Okay. You can see in that you can see in that um, poly neon lettering at the top. Uh, that's three millimeter lettering up there at the top. How small you can get your letters as long as you maintain column width with 60 weight thread. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. Again, we see some questions that are coming in that <clears throat> I know will be addressed in the slides that are coming, so we're not ignoring you. Keep them coming. Okay. Okay. Our 60-way thread is approximately 60% finer or thinner than the 40. So here you can see two, the two, the 40-weight and 60-weight, side by side. And Pat, maybe you can point out the differences between the two, because some are subtle and some are more obvious. Yeah, I think it's just the whole thing appears cleaner. With 60 weight thread, you're going to use a smaller needle, which makes a smaller hole in your garment. So things like the, the lettering, even though this is the same design sewn out in the two different threads, you can see how much cleaner the live band brand 
is uh, on the picture on the right. And even though the deer looks fine in the first one, you, it, it, it's much cleaner in the second um, view where it's sewn out in 60-way thread. So sometimes you can do a whole design in 60-way thread. What Pat was talking about with column widths when you're doing small lettering. Um, also, it's the small openings. So um, if you look on, on the inside, the B, the R, and the A, uh, those little openings will tend to close up um, much easier if you're using 40 weight thread when you go down in size and lettering. Um, so it's really important to keep those uh, opening sizes big enough. and and when you use 60 weight thread, you can actually get those openings even smaller and still maintain them because the thread is um, much finer and we're putting a much smaller hole in using this, the finer needle. So you get much clear, more clarity that way. Rich, I just, well, I just noticed one question. Um, a person who's trying to follow us and is, is hearing your voice kind of come in and out, if you could speak up a little bit. I know. Um, our presenters are spread out between Oregon, Arizona, and we're here in New Hampshire, so uh, we're trying to make sure that the audio is consistent. And Rich, I think you're the only one that people might be having a little bit of a hard time hearing. Okay, I'll try to speak up. Is that a little bit better? Yes, that's much better. And Pat, you used a term called column width. Um, could you just go into a little bit more detail on that, please? Yeah, just take the, the letter I in live there. The column width is from measures from one side of the to the other of that I, okay, or the back of the L, uh, the measurement from one side of it to the other. And I always like my columns to be at least 1.2 millimeters wide. And so even though we can do shorter letters in 60 weight thread, they're, they're not so tall as into the height of that I or that L, you still want to maintain a column width so that there's, uh, because you have the size of the needle penetrating on each side of that column when you're doing satin stitch letters, you want to make sure that there's enough width so that there's thread left on top of your column. So 1.2 millimeters is, is my magic number. Um, and you want to watch, like Rich said, in the B and the R and the A, that those little spaces are at least a millimeter wide. but uh, sometimes with 60 weight thread, you, you, we're, we're going to go through this on another logo. I know that we're going to show a picture of, but you, you want um, those spaces to maintain that width so that they don't close up when they're sewing out. But you can really see between these two pictures, like in the B and the R, how much better the holes and those letters look, which is what makes them clean. Uh, it, they look so much better in the 60 weight thread than they do in the 40 weight thread. Okay, that's great. I think Thanks. the other thing with small lettering that um, is important as a digitizer, and I know Pat would probably agree with this, um, every stitch counts. And that's why keyboard lettering really um, suffers when we get down to real small lettering because uh, the keyboard lettering was, is pretty much kind of canned lettering that a program is designed to run. Well, uh, the program, I, I think even the best ones, uh, tend to, to maybe add extra uh, stitches here and there in the underlay um, and travel stitches. Well, every added stitch is a potential problem, um, especially when you're dealing with these narrow columns of like what Pat's saying, 1.2 millimeters wide. So um, by using 60 weight thread, you know, your, your, your level of forgiveness when you get down that small, it goes way up. I mean, you're, you're able to maintain that clarity much easier. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, in going over the attributes again, uh, we want you to know that Classic Rayon is available in both Classic Rayon and in Poly Neon. In Classic Rayon, there are 65 colors that are available. And on your color card, you'll see a dark blue circle next to the colors that are available in 60, 60 weight thread. Um, the classic rayon is uh, washable in water temperature up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's important. And also, both classic rayon and polyneon 
are available on 1,640 yard spools. Yeah, Alice, so, if I can comment in here, absolutely. even though this thread is available in so many colors, uh, I would have all of my digitizing customers uh, keep in stock um, 1024 in gold, uh, 1242 in navy, uh, green 1051, white and black, and red 1147. And I ask them to keep those in stock just all the time. One, because you know the thread's inexpensive to buy just because it comes in the small cones, uh, small spools. And uh, have it on hand because we never knew. Uh, usually it's the digitizer that determines that something needs to be done in 60 weight thread. And so I wouldn't know that they always had it on hand. Um, for me to go ahead and use it, and then when I sent them the color chart for any particular design, I would say, uh, you know, maybe this is white, uh, 40 weight here in this area, but when we get down to this white in the bottom for that small lettering, um, I would put white 60 weight. And so I, anyway, I always had my customers stock those colors. Pat, could you and, just repeat those color numbers, please? We did have a question come in asking you to repeat sure. them. Uh -huh. Red 1147. Gold 1024, uh, 1242 for navy, uh, 1051 for green, black is 1000, and white 1001. And I just used to have them have that in stock. All, I would do that in my initial interview with a new customer. You know, get some size 9 needles and get these threads. And since most machines have 15 needles on them now, um, I would have them set up the last three needles with the size, uh, the last three needle positions of the machine with size nine needles and keep 60 weight on those. And then when I felt like 60 weight was really called for to give them a good design, um, I, I knew that they were all set up to run it all the time. That's a good trick that will be coming up later in the webinar as well. Let's take a look okay. at the next slide, which will give us the attributes of polyneon. Very similar, except for two main things. One is that polyneon is available in 100 colors. Again, if you have a polyneon color card, the blue dot next to the colors that are available in 60 weight is an indication of which ones you can use. And also, like the polyneon 40 weight, poly 60 is bleachable. So if you are working on any items that there's any possibility that your customer will be putting the item in, in wash water that has bleach, then polyester, polyneon would be your choice. Um, it's also important to point out that both classic rayon and polyneon are Ecotex uh, certified class one. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Ecotex, that is an international organization that tests and verifies products to be free from harmful levels of over 100 substances that are known to be dangerous to people and to the environment. So both of these threads um, have a class one, which is the highest rating you can achieve from Ecotex. Alice, can I jump in again on a, a question that has already been answered, but I, I think I can add to that answer? Sure. Uh, the question was, can you use 60 weight thread on a stock design that was digitized for 40 weight thread? Will it have to have the density changed? Um, and the answer given was, you need to have the density adjusted in a 40 weight to the design to use 60 weight thread which is true, we use more density with 60 weight thread, but many stock designs come with too much density put in them. And uh, one of the tricks to running a stock design that you've got, and there's too much density in that design, uh, one, one solution is to increase the size of the design about 10%. But another solution is switch to 60 weight thread, and in some cases that will make that design run much better. because it's thinner, so, so it, it's automatically reducing the density. Okay, good to know. Um, okay, now this will address many of the questions that have come in while we've been starting. Let's take a look at exactly how to run uh, 60 weight thread on your machine. Some of you do your own digitizing, some of you go outside your shop to have it done. Pat and Rich um, can speak to this, certainly from years and years of experience. Um, Pat just began talking about how you will need to increase your density by 25 to 30 percent in areas where the 60 weight is being used.
Do, do you want, um, shall we jump in there just a little bit more? Um, I'm trying to see. On, on lettering. Uh, no, that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. On, on lettering, um, when we say, you know, increase your density 25 to 30 uh, percent, some of that, how much you're going to increase your density depends on the color. And if you're sewing in black and it's going to go on a white garment, um, you might want to increase it by 30 percent. And um, <laughs> my mind my mind's not wrapping around uh, what percentage that would be. Probably taking your density, if you're used to saying your standard density is four, you would change your density to about three. Okay, and the same would hold true if you're doing another high contrast combination which comes up often is white thread on a black garment. Uh, but if you're doing navy lettering on top of a khaki garment, you might only have to increase your density by 25%. So uh, that, that is um, a little bit more of an explanation. Also, if you're doing a fill in the um, 60 weight thread, you might want to change your density to three. Or if you're using like Wilcom software, you would say uh, on the automatic density change to do it at about 70%. Pat, I think you'll need to address um, or rich the question about uh, that just came in from one customer asking if you basically double uh, the density going from 40 to 60. Could you address that? Is that no, uh, no, you don't. You don't. Um, you don't put half the density in. You increase it by about 30 percent. So that means you're putting, um, like on on the Wellcom system, the way it does it under their auto density, you would change it from 100 percent to 70 percent. <laughs> Or if you're putting in numbers where your density is normally four, you would put your density at about three. Uh, what's your favorite, Rich? Well, I, I tend to, um, when I'm using light color thread against a dark background, I'll tend to the 30% increase uh, in density for 60 weight thread. But I go down like you um, to 25% um, if it's just black or a dark thread against a light background. So it really depends on the design and the color. But I was going to point out that um, most of my customers, I um, probably like you, um, I um, talk to them about a design before I start. And we'll discuss some of the challenging areas. And usually the challenging areas are those small lettering or small detail. And we talk about it. And we, we decide, well, should we use 68 hit thread here or not? And most cases, I you know I recommend it because it's, it looks so much better. And um, but then when I do the design, I make sure that I indicate that when I send my sequence uh, along with the design. So in other words, um, I'll tell them when and where to use a 60 weight thread because you know if you make a mistake and 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 run 40 weight thread where it's got the added density for 60 weight, uh, you're probably going to have some problems, some thread breaks. So it's important to be clear about where you're going to use 60 weight thread and where you're not. OK, the question, um, another question that came in from one of our visitors, is it the base density or the top density that you're referring to? Top density. Top density, OK. And I, I read a question wrong when I, I just asked earlier, but are we saying that you would double the stitch count? from 40 to 60. I know that to be a no, but if you could go into that a little bit. It's not the, the stitch count's not doubling from 40 to 60. Right, it's not doubling, it's increasing by the 25 to 30 percent. Okay. All right, let's go to the, to the next slide then. Okay, here's some more information about using 60 weight on your machine. And here we talk about the speed of the machine, the needle to use, and again the tensions. Um, that you want to decrease slightly. Also the speed of the machine and the 65.9 needle is what you're going to want to use for best results. Right, I set my machine uh, when I'm running 60 weight thread, but I usually run designs at 650 stitches per minute anyway. Even though machines will now sew a thousand stitches a minute, I don't think it's really good for any particular design. So um, for regular design that's got 60 weight thread in it, um, I think 650 stitches a minute is just fine. 
Uh, and uh, do you decrease it more when you're running hats on 60 weight thread, Rich? You know, I might uh, reduce it, uh, the speed slightly, but to be honest with you, I run my machines uh, regardless if it's 60 weight thread or 40 weight thread. I, I run, like you, between 650 and 700 stitches per minute. Sometimes on a cap, I might reduce it down like by 50 stitches per minute, but um, the one thing you might do uh, that I tend to do for particularly structured caps is um, I might go up in size on the needle from a 65.9 to a 70.10 um, just because it makes the needle a little heavier, a little more uh, resistant to uh, needle breaks because of uh, the tough nature of some of these structured caps and the heavy buckrams that are used. Um, and that doesn't, uh, 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 the uh, performance of 60 weight thread does not suffer by doing that. Um, but if you have a preference, obviously in, in a, on a knit or something, a 65.9 is the desired needle because you're putting in a, a smaller hole. And the smaller the hole, the better. As far as tensions go, um, I run my uh, thread tensions uh, just a little bit lighter than I do uh, with 60 weight thread than I do 40 weight. Um, for those of you who use gauges, which I encourage, um, I set my thread tensions for 60 weight at about 100 grams as opposed to, um, say, 120 with 40 weight. So that gives you an idea of, of uh, the difference between uh, the tension levels for 60 uh, versus 40 weight. Okay, um, there's a question, Pat. I know we've had this conversation before. A uh, person is asking, if you do your digitizing outside your own shop, do you have to tell your digitizer to use 60 weight, or will the digitizer simply know where to put it? Well, it depends on the digitizer and how much experience they have had in 60 weight. Um, so if there's something that you think should be done in 60 weight, then yes, I think you should mention it to them. And in my digitizing practice or riches, we would most likely call you and say, you know, in this particular design, if you really want it to be as small as you're telling me you want it, then we're going to need to use 60 weight thread. But certainly, if you have some experience with 60 weight thread, if, if the customer asking this question tries it out and he knows that black lettering on white piquet shirts always shows up better if he uses 60 weight thread, um, I would not be reluctant at all to tell my digitizer, I want that black lettering with density 30% um, greater because I'm going to be sewing it on white piquet shirts and white thread. So it, it's a two-way street. Uh, I think some of the people that are watching this seminar may need to educate their digitizers, and digitizers uh, may need to educate their uh, embroidery customers on when to use 60-weight thread. Yes, and I think, um, again, a lot of it is there is no, in my opinion, and sometimes I'm sure Pat would agree, that that some designs, there's really no option. If they want something that small, you, it's almost a requirement that you have to use 60 weight thread. Now, there are some times, and we'll see some examples here in a little bit, but there are some times when you have the option whether you can use 60 weight or, or 40 weight because either will work. But um, in some cases, then, I have actually done designs where I'll give my uh, customer the option and I'll send them two separate files one that has a greater density for the 60 weight um, segments and one where I just run it at regular uh, densities for their option to be able to use 40 weight. But that way they have the option. Rich, again, the needle size that you recommend for using 60 weight on caps? Yes, I use it all the time. I have no problems with it. Um, you mentioned it a stronger terrific. needle. Yeah, SI, he uses a size um, 10 yeah, needle. Yeah, I like to use a, um, like I said, I, I tend to use a size 10 needle um, on caps just because caps are so much more uh, uh, prone to uh, needle breaks. And that's true regardless if you're using 40 weight or not. You know, some caps are really difficult because of their heavy buckrams. Yeah, and, and just as a, a comment, because we're talking about needle size, uh, yes, I use a size 9 for 60 weight thread. But I do all of my sewing, um, 
for 40 weight thread with size 10 needles because everything just turns out a little bit cleaner just because of the smaller needle penetration in the garments you're sewing. Okay, let's go to the next slide and take a look at two ideas that um, Rich and, and Pat have practiced. Pat mentioned one earlier in the webinar. Um, one is if you have trouble threading uh, the smaller size needle. Pat, can you address that? Sure. Um, just to make it easier to see that small hole in the size 10 or size 9 needles, and, and even with some color threads on a size 10 needle, but if you put, just take a grab a piece of your white backing, one of your white backing squares, and slide it over your arm of your machine, it's much easier to see where that hole in the needle is to thread the needle. Okay. And then, as you mentioned earlier, um, if you have um, the ability to set up a couple of needles with just the 60 weight in maybe a black to leave them there so that it's there and waiting for you when you do need it for a logo. Right. We used to, you know, set one up. Of course, you can change the thread for whatever design you're doing. But we used to keep black, white, and red on the machine all the time in 60 weight thread just as our last three needle numbers. Okay. Let's take a look at some stitch outs. I think this will bring some questions to people's minds as well. Now this is a collection um, and maybe uh, it, we can zoom in, but in zooming in um, it kind of defeats the purpose of showing how small these actually are. Some of these are done by Rich and by Pat, again a couple of them by our designer digitizer in Germany. Um, but the one in the lower uh, middle, the Fort Huatuca that uh, Pat mentioned earlier, this is also a showstopper when people see the actual stitch out at trade shows, the amount of detail that are in the horses and the riders. Um, this is yep. a great example. Yeah, the horse and riders are an inch and a half tall in this design. And I think all of the colors used for the horses, the Indian and the cavalry rider, are all 60 weight thread. But the incredible detail of this was the the black outline and the amount of detail that is that is in these animals and, and they're very cl much clearer than this um, picture is really um, but it, this was only possible with 60 weight thread. We, we thought this was even impossible when I first took on this job but this became one of my very favorite logos. The lettering um, in the Port Huachuca 50 with all this little serif uh, lettering is also 60 weight thread. And I know Pat I think it was you or maybe Rich, uh, regarding the Providence, uh, the logo on the other side, where you talk about the little trick about, about the E. And I also want to encourage um, both, both Pat and Rich can see the questions that are coming in, and we're trying to keep up with them here. But if you see something specific um, that you want to answer, please go for it. But I know yeah. that this was intriguing when you spoke about how you accomplished this small lettering. Yeah, Rich, since you did that, do you want to address that? As I mentioned before, uh, part of the challenges in doing small lettering are, are maintaining, as Pat said, the, the column width. But the, the real challenge in my mind is not just the column width, it's also the little openings, like especially in the small, um, small E, uh, the, the A, um, certainly the B. But the E is probably the biggest challenge because <clears throat> if that space gets too small and, and and then it closes up. And with regular weight thread, or even 60 weight, if that, if that opening gets too small, it'll close up and then you'll lose the readability and the quality of the letter. So one of the tricks that we do as digitizers is um, in the underlay part of the creation of that letter, um, I travel the underlay around underneath, obviously, the, the column. And then I'll use a manual stitch and I'll go back and forth. And so what makes up that crossbar in the lowercase e is simply a, a running stitch that goes back and forth once. So it's actually uh, the thickness of the thread twice in two passes. And that allows me to keep that letter opening um, space big enough um, to maintain the, the readability of the letter um, and, and basically uh, not have to worry about column width because I'm not using a satin stitch in that case. Rich, how big that, are these uh, crossbar? Sorry, Rich, how big are these Pardon letters? Me? How big are the letters in real life? Um, I think that, well, the lowercase letters are 
um, a little less than three millimeters tall. Um, I think the, uh, uh, the the uppercase letter and like the tall part of the the, the tallest part of the D or the F's uh, or the L, uh, those are about uh, three and a half millimeters. Okay. And Rich, what would happen if uh, another question that came in? If you were using both 40 and 60 in a design, what would happen if you used the 65-9 needle with 40 weight thread? Well, I think you could uh, you could probably get away with it. It's, it um, I don't think it would necessarily hurt. Uh, the only problem that you might have is um, you're going to get a little bit more drag, um, and Pat might help me with this, but I think you might get a little bit more have a more tendency of looping uh, with 40 weight thread trying to uh, thread it through a ni size 9 needle because, again, the size 9 needle is going to put a really tiny hole in the garment and then the thread has to pass, follow through uh, that hole. And um, if there's a little drag there, you might have a, a tendency for looping, but um, I, I don't know. I, you could probably get away with it without too much trouble. What do you think, Pat? Uh, what I would do if I had, if, let's say I only had a one needle machine, and I had to do a design that had both 60 weight and 40 weight in it, I would use a size 10 needle on both threads. Because I think you would create more, it, it would depend on the design of course, but more chances for thread breaks in the 40 weight thread just because it is dragging through that small opening. And 60 weight thread will run real well in a size 10 needle. At nine is our favorite, but you could use a size 10. So if I only had one needle on my machine and didn't want to have to change needles every time I had changed colors, I would use a size 10 needle. And a question just coming in. Um, do you need to adjust the hook on the machine for the 60? No. Not at all. Okay. It's, it's very, very easy to use. We're not seeing the questions come in. Oh. Um, so um, you're going to have to let us know when there's a good question. But um, it's very, very easy to use, and even though you might adjust your tension slightly when you use the 60 weight thread, uh, I'm not an operator. I've always been lucky enough to have uh, people running my machines for me, but um, it's just like any time you change a thread on a machine, you, you're going to adjust the tension slightly because of the dye lot and the dye color of the thread or whatever. So um, it's not like you're going to be doing anything majorly different to your machine to use the 60 weight thread other than just uh, load it and put it through the needle, maybe put that size 9 needle in there. And um, it, it's just very, very easy to use. It's just, it's not a big deal at all. Okay. I, I think the picture above this one um, is, is another design that Rich did that just looks incredibly sharp with the 60 weight thread. Okay. What about... Um, yeah, there's a Sorry, go ahead, I'm Rich. just going to say that um, uh, here's a case where I, I actually did the original sew out using regular 40 weight thread, but um, I decided because it was white thread against the black background, and by the way, this design was done uh, on a cap, on a black cap, on a flex fit cap, and I, I just decided that um, why not use 60 weight because, again, with the challenges of white thread, um, it's just going to look so much better. And uh, because I can increase the density, because the, it puts a smaller uh, needle penetration, um, I'm able to get more white coverage on that black background. So you just get a much sharper look. Okay. Yeah, I, think, I think that's an incredibly clean design. Over in the middle of this panel, um, there is another design where I used a lot of 60 weight thread. Um, it's called the DES logo. I think it's upper center. Yeah, there we go. The the one with the red and the green. Yeah. Uh, on this design, uh, it's another thing for Fort Huachuca here. Uh, this is for uh, the Department of All Emergency Services. So it includes the MPs and um, I can't remember what the Eagle was for and the fire department but there's, this is their combined organization. All the fill in the back of each of these triangles is 40 weight thread. But over here on the right hand side where we have the fire emblem, that whole emblem is a half inch tall. And so the helmet, the hatchet, and the, the horn, uh, and the ladder, all the black detail, that's all 60 weight thread. And there's, there wouldn't have been any way 
if Madeira hadn't invented 60 weights radio, there wouldn't have been a way to get this little emblem put into this logo. Uh, the guns on the top for the uh, MPs, um, they're done in 60 weight thread. If the outlining on that had been, you can see this little black line going across and there's little um, triggers and you know just little tiny, tiny detail on these guns. If that had been done in regular 40 weight thread, they just kind of would have been a black blob and it would have um, closed up over the guns and you couldn't have seen that detail. And then this little tiny eagle, um, you know, that, that's like 1.2 millimeters wide across his body there. Uh, the wings were so small I couldn't even use uh, horizontal or vertical stitches. They're, they're just totally, just little tiny um, horizontal stitches there. And um, th this is just one of the, my favorite designs, I think, that I've ever done. But it, it was only possible with the 60 weight thread. OK, if you're talking about um, Don't Bug Me, which isn't on this panel, but we will come back to it again. Pat, what about the type of underlay that you would use to avoid having to use a topping? Um, on small lettering, uh, yeah. I use an edge walk. Uh, with a very short stitch length, like 1.5 millimeters. Okay. Underlay under all letters. Okay. And a question: um, What does keyboard lettering refer to? Keyboard lettering is lettering fonts that that um, just come with your software. Okay. And what's the question about keyboard lettering? That was it. I think the person oh, okay. that just what it is. Okay, rather than digitized lettering, when when I make lettering like on this logo or any logo or what Rich did down there in uh, the Providence, um, we actually manually digitize every one of those letters, and the fir and the difference between setting up keyboard lettering, which is something that you can just type into your embroidery software and it brings the lettering up is that we make a, our difference is that we make a running stitch underlay with a very short stitch length all the way through the letter and back to the beginning and then we do the columns. I don't know if Rich uses edge walk as much as I do but then I use an edge walk uh, running stitch underlay that the software automatically applies to the letter and um, it'll do this little tiny 1.5 millimeters of underlay about uh, four tenths of a millimeter away from the edge of the letter. And with that much underlay, um, you're able to, to sew a design on a, on a pique shirt, sew some small lettering on a pique shirt, and have it come out very clean. Pat, on that MP, DAC, that logo that you're talking about, is that all 60 weight or a combination of 60 and 40? Uh, it, it is 60 weight for uh, the lettering. Uh, the background fills were all in 40 weight, and at this time, I'm not sure if I used 60 weight. I think, you know, Rich had mentioned before um, how the color matching goes so well. But I think the outside border and the borders that make that V in the middle are are 40 weight thread, but the detail and the small lettering is 60 weight thread. Okay. And a question came in. Maybe this person joined us later, but Rich, again, a question about dye lot. I think your point was a good one earlier that the the colors are are matched up the 40 and 60. Yes, definitely, and and that's what makes adding this thread to your uh, your collection so easy, because if um, you've got regular 40 weight thread um, Madeira thread, um, and you want to use 60 weight, uh, the colors all match. So. Um, you can switch back and forth between the two like what Pat did in this design and uh, you'd never know that the, the colors are, uh, are any problem because they all match. Okay. Pat, a question. Sorry. Sorry. Another question on that, on that logo. Um, why are the stitch angles on the back panels going in different directions? Is that correct? That, yeah. Um, I, I always do that when I have adjacent colors of fill. I change the stitch angle of each one because it makes a very clean border and the colors don't bleed into each other. So each uh, section of, of, of adjacent fills, uh, I always do it as different stitch angle. And Pat, if, if, if all your stitch angles were the same, those you wouldn't, even though these 
where these meet are covered with that border, it still makes a very clean um, connection between the color changes. Okay. And the edge walk that you mentioned earlier, question is edge walk with what millimeter? 1.5 millimeters. 1.5, okay. Yeah, I think uh, what I've noticed about um, uh, the use of edge walk is if you don't use um, the correct stitch length, um, then that's where you'll, you'll have a problem with edge walk because edge walk is exactly what it means. It's a running stitch that runs right along the edge of a column. Well, if you, one, use a stitch length that's too long, and, and I see some people use two millimeter, two and a half millimeter stitch lengths for an edge walk, um, and two, you put that, that distance from the edge too close, then you're going to have a problem with the, the edge walk uh, being exposed. In other words, the top satin stitch does not cover it. So that's why you make sure that the stitch length is 1.5 to 1.8 millimeters and no more. And also you keep it within the column enough so that the, be sure that the column actually covers it. Okay. A couple of questions asking about the fabrics and what fabric 68 is going to work the best on. Um, some specific mentioned performance wear, another one mentioned bridal veils. Is there a concern about the, the thinness of a fabric that you can use 60 weight on? No, the finer the fabric, the more, uh, I, I, I would use 60 weight on, on any fabric. Uh, but the finer fabrics, uh, like an heirloom christening gown, if you're monogramming that, um, the 60 weight thread is an excellent choice. Uh, bridal veils, it's an excellent choice performance wear because it's such a light fabric in most cases, it's an excellent choice. It, it, it's really good for anything. Uh, I do want to back up and just add what, um, there was one comment that I wanted to make about uh, the edge walk. It, uh, you might not need it if you're doing the, you know, on this DES logo that we've been talking about. You might not need it on those letters, but when you're doing the um, 60 weight thread lettering directly on a um, uh, Piquet shirt like this uh, Mrs. Cubinston's over here. Okay, you're, you're going directly onto the fabric. Um, that edge walk really, really helps, okay, to use it in that case. Another question asking if you could talk about stitch lengths a little bit. It wasn't a specific question, just in a little bit more detail. Yeah, I, I think uh, just that you you want to remember on all your columns, like um, we're looking at this Mrs. Cubinson's right now, um, those probably are one and a half to two millimeters wide on those column widths. Um, you know, you want to maintain, I think, at least 1.2 to you, Rich, for a column width on a 60 weight letter, or do you go down maybe to a millimeter? Well, I think with 60 weight, you can certainly get down... Um, smaller, but as with anything in embroidery, the, the thicker the column, the better, or the bigger the design, the better. Well, that being said, everybody wants smaller and smaller lettering, and therefore we end up with smaller and smaller columns. Um, that being said, you know, I think if, if you have your target uh, width is 1.2, as you mentioned, you know, I think that's best. But in some cases, you can cheat a little bit, and I've gone down to even 0.8 millimeters. The problem is, as, as everyone knows, uh, with embroidery, um, as a stitch is formed, it's going to become smaller. Like a column, when you say 1.2 millimeters, what you actually end up with is really, after the, 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 the stitch is formed, is probably more like one millimeter anyway. So Left it's on getting top smaller of the as it sews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and if you're using this in a fill, um, let's, this little lion, it's not one of, that we digitized, but this griffin in the, in the middle of the screen. Um, now he looks like he was in metallic, which is probably done in 50 weight metallic. But I would, in a fill area with 60 weight thread, just as I would in, in almost any other thread, uh, I'd want a, a stitch length of 4 millimeters for a fill area. Do you agree, Rich? Yes, and I, I think that brings up a good point. Um, when we're t talking about um, uh, underlay, you know, there's two purposes for underlay. There's, you know, you stabilize um, and also 
um, you add loft. And so when you're going under a fill, what you're trying to do is create loft. In other words, you're trying to hold up uh, the top exposed stitches, like in a fill area. And so a longer stitch length, like four millimeters under a fill, is going to provide greater loft, which means um, you don't have to put as many stitches in to get the coverage you're looking for. Um, but when you're doing detail and you're doing underneath small lettering and you've got narrow columns, you're not trying to provide loft as much as you are trying to uh, provide a, a, a stable surface for that um, column to, uh, to be sewn on. And so therefore, you don't necessarily want stitch length there. You, you're looking in terms of, of making it longer. You want to actually make it shorter so that you ensure that the those, that underlay does not uh, get exposed. In other words, that the columns uh, adequately cover it. Rich, a question somebody... about Mrs. Um, the Mrs. Cubison um, logo that you did. Did you use the same density for the 40 and the 68? Uh, we didn't. No. I don't think either one of Did you do that, Rich? Yes. Yes, the oh. Cubisons? Yeah. Yep, and the question? The, um, the densities are different between the top one with the 40 weight and the bottom one, which was done with 60 weight. Again, I increased it by 25%. Um, um, this design actually was on the, for the side of a black cap. And um, while this lettering wasn't necessarily small, um, I just felt that, uh, as you can see here, it just looked much sharper using 60 weight tread. And that's, that's why I opted for that. Okay, we have, looks like running out of time here. I just want to throw a few more questions out to you. Um, for the dry wicking polyester, again, the, the performance wear that every um, embroiderer is finding more and more, would you use a 60 weight and a 65 needle, 65 nine needle on, on performance wear? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's yeah. a resounding yes. I, I think this person's having a problem with it. Um, which we can address down the road. Um, another question, do you need to use a different backing with 60 weight? No. Yeah, I, I always use the, the finest backing that's possible uh, for any project. Uh, I would use, if I was doing this on a t-shirt or one of those performance wear shirts, um, it depends on the total stitch count of the design, but something like this Mrs. Cubinson's or um, the bear that Rich showed, I would just use one piece of the, um, correct me here if I'm wrong, Weblon? Yep. You know, yeah, Weblon, okay. That, that's what I would use. Um, it, it, it just, it works well because it keeps the soft hand of those fabrics. You don't want to use a, a heavy backing behind those soft fabrics because you're taking all, what they call the hand or all the drape out of the material. Okay. Yes, and I, I like, especially with this performance decay, I'll use that Weblon. And then if I've got a really heavy stitch count design, um, I'll use a, a light tearaway uh, in addition to the Weblon. So I use the light tearaway on the outside and the Weblon closest to the material. Then when it's all said and done and the embroidery's finished, you just tear away the um, the, the that backing and then cut away the web lawn and it it uh, does not provide so much weight uh, that uh, that it caused a problem and it's also sheer so you don't see it um, when you're looking through the from the front at the embroidery and going back again to the performance wear just real quickly because I know there have been several questions on that it is a kind of a stumbling block for many embroiderers um, you both had a resounding yes. You would use uh, 60 weight thread on it. Would would you think that that would cut down on the puckering or on the um, the bad effects that some embroiderers are getting with performance wear? Yeah, it, it, it should just because it's you know using just that thin backing. Um, if you're using too heavy of a backing, that's going to add to the puckering up of that. Uh, if they have puckering and they haven't been using 60 weight thread, they've been using 40 weight thread, to try to get a clean look, they're probably putting too much density into their lettering. But going to the 60 weight thread is going to give them um, a smoother finish if they use these densities that we prescribed earlier. Okay. I would say, too, that um, embroidering on, 
on um, performance decay. I mean, it's a challenge, and and uh, puckering is certainly an issue. And so your densities are really important that you don't get too carried away with densities. But there's a couple other factors that um, significantly cause puckering with um, performance decay, and that one is your thread tensions. If your thread tensions are really high, then you're going to put a lot more stress uh, in, in the embroidery, and therefore you're going to have more tendency for puckering. Also, um, how you hoop it. If you hoop it too tight, you stretch it, um, you're going to have puckering too. So those are things, aside from the kind of thread you use, um, that will cause puckering. There's a, a question that was written in by a, actually more of a statement than a question. Um, and this is going to be the, the wrap-up one for, for this webinar, but customers writing in saying um, that they've tried the 50-weight metallic, which, Pat, you mentioned earlier, and how well it ran for them and how this might be something that we want to discuss as well, and that would be a topic for another webinar. I did want to let everybody know that our webinar has been recorded. It will be posted online in the video section of MadeiraUSA.com by the end of this week. And if we did not answer your question, we will be sending answers out to you by email. So please don't um, be concerned if we didn't address your question during this webinar. You will have an answer by email. We will also be sending out an email later today that will direct you to a page on our website for any special pricing on spools of 60 weight kits, just in case you want to get started. We appreciate your time this morning. We thank you for attending. We wish you luck in trying something new. And um, Pat and Rich, thank you so much for, for joining us today and helping out. Thank you. Thank you.